Hey, what's up folks? This is Keith and you're watching Barber's Auto Help. In today's video, I'm going to show you a very simplistic method for diagnosing an ignition misfire on a coil on plug ignition system. Now this is an inline four, but this will also work on V6s and V8s where you have a coil on plug ignition system design, which is basically a coil on top of a spark plug. Typically, when you have a misfire, your check engine light will be on and you'll have diagnostic trouble codes set in the PCM for one or more cylinder misfires. Some codes that you could possibly see are P0301, P0302, P0303, 304, 305, 306, 307, and 308. Now, if you got a V10, you could also have a P0309 or a P0310. Now, as you've probably already guessed, the last number in that code is the actual cylinder that's got the misfire on it. So a 301 would be cylinder number one, a 305 would be cylinder number five, so on and so forth. You get the picture there. So it's important to know what cylinder you're actually looking at before you actually employ the method that I'm about to show you here. Now, in order to find out what code you got, of course, you got to have a code scanner such as the one shown here that can at least scan codes and erase codes. This one right here is pretty cheap. You can get them for 35 bucks online, uh, you know, go to Amazon or whatever. You can get one pretty cheaply there. If you don't want to buy this particular tool, you don't have to. You can go down to your local parts store and I'm sure that they would be happy to scan the codes for free for you and at least get you started on this particular test here. But you do got to know what cylinder or cylinders has the misfire before you perform this test. Now, when it comes time to erase the codes in this process, you don't necessarily have to have a tool such as the one shown here. I'm going to post a link to a video showing how you can erase codes without a scan tool down in the description of this video. I'll also post a end screen video for you too at the very end of this video so you can watch that to find out how you can erase your codes without a scanner. Now, just a hypothetical, let's pretend that this vehicle had a P0303, which is a cylinder number three misfire. On this vehicle here, this is number one, number two, number three, and number four. So this would be cylinder number three, and that would be the coil that is suspect or the spark plug that is suspect. So I go ahead and mark the ignition coil like so. And what we're gonna do is a really simple process. We're gonna do what's called the switcheroo and we're going to disconnect our ignition coils. I'm going to also disconnect the cylinder number two and cylinder number four ignition coil. And we're going to go ahead and loosen up our ignition coils. We're going to take three of them out, including the bad one or the suspected bad one. Set those right there. Now what we're going to do, we're going to switch the cylinder number three spark plug with the cylinder number four spark plug. Let's remove the number three spark plug. We'll set it up here. Then remove the number four spark plug, set it up here. We're gonna take the number four spark plug, put it in the number three hole. Number three spark plug, put it in the number four hole. Tighten the spark plugs down. Then we're gonna to proceed to swap our ignition coils. Now we're going to take the number two ignition coil and put it on the number three cylinder. Then we're going to take our number three ignition coil and put it on the number two cylinder. And then the number four ignition coil goes back in the same spot. Okay, so what you'll need to do, of course, at this point, you want to reconnect your coils and tighten them up and all that. You'll need to erase the diagnostic trouble codes and then test drive the vehicle. Try to get the check engine light to come back on and get a diagnostic trouble code to set. Now, when you check your codes this time, if you had a bad coil or spark plug, the code should have moved to a different cylinder. For instance, if you had a bad ignition coil, the ignition misfire should have moved to cylinder number two. And then if you had a bad spark plug, the ignition misfire should have moved to cylinder number four. Now say that the code remained on cylinder number three. What's going on then? You may still actually have an ignition misfire on number three that could be caused by a problem on the primary circuit, either the connector, the wiring going to the PCM or possibly a bad PCM but for the sake of this video we're just going to focus on the coil and the plugs as that's usually what the cause of an ignition misfire is on a coil on plug system 90% of the time it's going to be either a coil or a spark plug now there are other things that can cause a misfire 
that's not an ignition misfire. You could have poor compression on that cylinder. You could also have a faulty fuel injector or faulty circuitry going to that fuel injector. This video is not designed to encompass all of those possibilities or to give you all the tools necessary to diagnose any and all issues that can cause a cylinder specific misfire. Now I will be making another video that does go a little bit more in depth into that. If you would like to watch it when it becomes available, I will post a link down in the description of this video to that video. Just feel free to watch that. It's there for you if you'd like it. Now I will say, if you choose to use this method guys, do it at your own risk. I use this method all the time at work, albeit I have equipment at work that will allow me to see a specific cylinder misfiring in real time so i don't have to drive it for an extended period of time while the vehicle has a misfire whenever you have an ignition misfire the problem is you have a lot of raw fuel being introduced into the exhaust system and of course you have your catalytic converter which is a part of the exhaust system and raw fuel getting into the catalytic converter can be bad news for the catalytic converter it can cause the cat to fail prematurely so if you use this method and you have to drive it for an extended period of time after you do the old switcheroo there just know you could be damaging that catalytic converter if you drive it too long. So if you do it this way, do it at your own risk. Do know that you could be damaging the catalytic converter. If you don't want to take that risk, then I would suggest not doing it this way. Well, folks, of course, that is it. As always, please read the entire description down below this video before you apply any of this knowledge. There may be some information I need to clarify, and that's where I do that. Also, please read the disclaimer at the very end of it. Thanks again, guys. Have a good one.